Lucius Emilius Paulus Macedonicus was a two-time consul of the Roman Republic and a noted general who conquered Macedon putting an end to the Antigonide dynasty family. His father was Lucius Emilius Paulus, the consul defeated and killed in the Battle of Cannae. Lucius Emilius was, in his time, the head of his branch of the Emilii Paulii, an old and aristocratic patrician family. Their influence was immense, particularly due to their fortune and alliance with the Cornelii Scipiones. He was father to Scipio Emilianus Africanus. Early career, after the fulfillment of his military service and being elected military tribune, Paulus was elected curule in 193 BC. The next step of his cursus honorum was the election as praetor in 191 BC. At the term of this office he went to the Hispania provinces where he campaigned against the Lusitanians between 191 and 189 BC. However, he failed to be elected consul for several years. Paulus was elected consul for the first time in 182 BC, with Nius Berbius Tam Phyllis as junior partner. His next military command, with Proconsular Imperium, was in the next year, against the Ingorni of Luguria, Paulus and Macedonia. The Third Macedonian War broke out in 171 BC, when King Perseus of Macedon defeated a Roman army led by the consul Publius Licinius Crassus in the Battle of Callinicus. After two years of results indecisive for either side, Paulus was elected consul again in 168 BC. As consul, he was appointed by the Senate to deal with the Macedonian War. Shortly afterwards, on June 22, he won the decisive Battle of Pydna. Perseus of Macedonia was made prisoner and the Third Macedonian War ended. To set an example, Paulus ordered the killing of 500 prominent Macedonians known for their opposition to Rome. He also exiled many more to Italy and confiscated their belongings in the name of Rome but, according to Plutarch, kept too much to himself. Other sources report that he kept for himself only the extensive royal library, in which act he set an example for later Roman generals, such as Lucullus. On setting out on the return to Rome in 167 BC, his legions were displeased with their share of the plunder. To keep them happy, Paulus decided on a stop in Epirus, a kingdom suspected of sympathizing with the Macedonian cause. The region had been already pacified, but Paulus ordered the sacking of 70 of its towns. 150,000 people were enslaved and the region was left to bankruptcy. Paulus' return to Rome was glorious. With the immense plunder collected in Macedonia and Epirus, he celebrated a spectacular triumph, featuring no less than the captured king of Macedonia himself and his sons, putting an end to the dynasty. As a gesture of acknowledgement, the Senate awarded him the surname Macedonicus. This was the peak of his career. In 164 BC he was elected censor. He fell ill, appeared to be recovering, but relapsed within three days and died during his term of office in 160 BC. Family life and descendants His father Lucius Emilius Paulus died in battle in 216 BC in the Battle of Cannae, when Emilius Paulus was still a boy. The Emilii Pauli were connected by marriage and political interests to the Scipios, but their role in his subsequent upbringing is not clear. He had been married first to Papiria Massinus, daughter of the consul Gaius Papirius Marzo, whom he divorced, according to Plutarch, for no particular reason. From this marriage, four children were born two sons and two daughters, the elder Emilia Paula Prima apparently married to the son of Marcus Porcius Cato, and the younger Emilia Paula Secunda to Quintus Elius Tubero, a rich man of a plebeian family. He divorced his wife while his younger son was still a baby. According to Roman historians, thus the divorce probably took place around 183 BC to 182 BC.
Nevertheless, he was elected consul in 182 BC. Paulus Macedonicus then married a second time and had two more sons, the elder born around 181 BC and the younger born around 176 BC. He also apparently had another daughter, who was a small girl when her father was chosen consul for the second time. Since four boys were too many for a father to support through the cursus honorum, Paulus decided to give the oldest two boys up for adoption, probably between 175 BC and 170 BC. The elder was taken by a Quintus Fabius Maximus and became Quintus Fabius Maximus Emilianus, thus joining his fortunes to the house of a national hero. The younger, possibly named Lucius, was adopted by his own cousin Publius Cornelius Scipio, elder son and heir of Scipio Africanus, and became Publius Cornelius Scipio Emilianus, thus falling heir to the legacy of Rome's most influential political dynasty, with the eldest son safely adopted by two of the most powerful patrician houses. Paulus Macedonicus counted on the two younger ones to continue his own name. This was not to happen. Both of them died young, one shortly after the other, at the same time that Paulus celebrated his triumph. The elder of the two remaining sons was fourteen and the younger nine, according to Polybius. Their names are unknown to us. The successes of his political and military career were thus not accompanied by a happy family life. At his death, his sons Quintus Fabius Maximus Emilianus and Publius Cornelius Scipio Africanus Emilianus received his property by his will. Even though they were legally no longer Emilii Pauli, Scipio gave his share to his older brother who was less wealthy. Paulus's second wife received her dowry back from the sale of some of her late husband's property. His married daughters had presumably received dowries from their father. Emilia Paula Prima is known to have married in or around 164 BC. With the death of Macedonicus, the Emilii Pauli became extinct, even though he had two living sons. His elder surviving son Fabius Emilianus eventually became consul and fathered at least one son, who in turn became consul as Fabius Allobrigicus in 121 BC. This man, in turn, may have been the ancestor of later Fabii who tied their fortunes to Julius Caesar and Augustus. The younger surviving son was more famous as Scipio Emilianus but died leaving no known issue. Of the daughters, the elder was ancestor of at least two consuls of no particular distinction. The younger was mother of a consul Quintus Elius Tubero. His first and former wife Paperia Masonia survived her ex-husband and lived to enjoy her former sister-in-law's property presented to her by her younger son. At her death, her property was divided between her sons, but Scipio gave it to his sisters. Paulus's immediate surviving descendants Quintus Fabius Maximus Emilianus, apparently father of Quintus Fabius Maximus Allobrogicus, Consul 121 BC Quintus Fabius Maximus, who was allegedly deprived of his inheritance by a Roman magistrate Fabia, chief festal, who married Publius Cornelius Dolabella, consul in 44 BC, as his first wife, and had a son. Dolabella then was adopted into the plebeian ranks, and then married 50 BC Tullia, only daughter of Cicero. According to some sources, Fabia was the elder half-sister of Tullia's mother Terentia. Publius Cornelius Dolabella, consul in AD 10 with C. Junius Silanus. Publius Cornelius Dolabella was proconsul of Africa in the reign of Tiberius, AD 23-24. Smith reports, in the course of the administration of his province he gained a complete victory over the new Midian Takfarunas, but although he had formerly been a very great flatterer of Tiberius, Yet he did not obtain the ornaments of a triumph, in order that his predecessor in the province of Africa, Junius Blasius, an uncle of Sajanus, might not be thrown into the shade. In AD 27, he joined Domitius Afer in the accusation against his own relative Quintilius Varus, another son, mentioned occasionally in sources. 
possibly the same as Allobrogicus, who was quaestor to his better-known blood uncle in Spain, Scipio Emilianus. Aemilia Paula Prima, mother of Gaius Porcius Cato. Aemilia Paula Secunda, mother of Quintus Elius Tubero, consul 117 BC.